The sizzling Southall Summer 24 release is just around the corner, and just like sunshine breaking through the clouds, the highly anticipated release notes are here to illuminate your day. This summery burst of features brings a wave of exciting new additions. First up, some exciting news with Apex. Dynamic formulas can now handle S objects. With the introduction of the formula builder method, you can easily create a formula builder instance to tailor your formulas as needed. What's even better? You can use the get referenced fields method to fetch a list of field names referenced within a formula. This handy feature streamlines your workflow by providing quick access to the fields your formula interacts with. Here's a bonus. While formula evaluation in Apex is constrained by a character limit, there's no need to worry about hitting the compile size limit. This flexibility allows you to craft complex formulas without being hindered by compile size restrictions. Let's take a look at how this might work. Let's say you want to calculate a potential discount for an opportunity based on the opportunity amount and a user specified discount percentage stored on a custom field. Let's break down what this is doing. First, we query for the relevant opportunity record. Next, we create a formula builder instance and assume a hypothetical discount function within the formula builder to calculate the discount based on the amount and percentage before the build method finalizes the formula. The evaluate with op method then executes the formula in the context of the opportunity, substituting field values. Lastly, we cast the result to a decimal for further usage. In the race to the top of your industry, one detail can trip you up, like the handoff of work, for example. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be this way. Work Relay, a Salesforce app by NeoStella, ensures the right work is done by the right person at the right time. No dropped batons, we promise. Team up with Work Relay today at salesforcebend.com forward slash work. Next up, there are plenty of new and updated Apex items. Let's start with some new Apex classes. The external client app OAuth Handler is your go-to for managing external client apps, offering key methods like authorized and refresh. And let's not forget the Auth HTTP callout mock util, a handy utility class boosting test coverage with mock HTTP callouts. Now let's talk methods. The Auth JWT class has undergone some tweaks, handling exceptions differently and providing additional claims for easier conversion. It's all about making your life easier when working with JWTs. In the Connect API namespace, also known as Connect in Apex, new classes, methods and enums are introduced, offering expanded functionalities for REST API resource actions. In the data source namespace, Updates focus on mapping external data types to Salesforce external objects via the Apex Connector framework. New methods like currency, date, email, percent, and phone in the column class enable the creation of new columns on a data source table. Under the system namespace, notable additions include Apex cursors for traversing large result sets, instantiation of formula builder, improved error handling for non-platform event S objects, and new exceptions for cursor management. In the formula eval namespace, which is currently in beta, enhancements include new methods for retrieving referenced field names in formulas and setting context variables for formula evaluation. Lastly, the enablement namespace, which is currently in developer preview, introduces classes and methods for creating custom items in enablement programs. Key classes like learning item type and learning item type handler facilitate defining exercises and learning item types, along with providing metadata for information for custom learning item types. In the upcoming release, Sokol is getting some updates similar to what's happening with Apex. These changes might affect existing code that relies on older errors and functionality. One of the updates involves changes to error codes. The error code malformed query now takes the place of the query filter operator. Now here's a big one. Negative currency values are now allowed in queries. For example, you can run a query like select name from invoice where balance is less than minus 500 US dollars. Various error messages have been refined for better clarity. Whether it's an invalid query or unexpected tokens, you'll notice smoother error handling. Errors related to using null literals in where statements have been given an update, making troubleshooting smoother. Salesforce have clarified errors related to nested functions, ensuring smoother execution and troubleshooting. Errors in date-time literals have been improved, providing clearer guidance for developers. Lastly, 
Errors related to using with security enforced without proper Apex context setup have been updated, ensuring better security practices. Additionally, there's a reminder about being cautious with SOCL queries against data model objects to avoid excessive data services credits usage. Features like for loops for recursion may result in multiple queries, so usage should be monitored. Static SOCL is now available for querying data cloud data model objects, offering a more direct option compared to dynamic SOCL or Connect API. This enhancement streamlines querying of DMOs, making it more efficient. Starting from API version 61, SOCL queries using Apex database.query locator or within for loops are supported, unlike before where only the first 201 records were returned. Batch Apex can't use query locators with DMOs but is supported with iterable. This change applies across all Salesforce editions. However, running SOCL queries against DMOs can consume data service credits from your data cloud subscription. Caution should be exercised when using features like for loops for recursions that result in multiple queries to data cloud. Scratch org snapshots, which entered beta in the spring 24 release, is now generally available. This feature allows users to capture a snapshot of a scratch org's configuration at a specific moment, enabling the replication of the same setup in other scratch orgs. It is accessible in both Lightning Experience and Salesforce Classic across various editions. Upgrading the DevHub org to the Spring 24 release is necessary to access this feature. By simplifying the setup of Scratch orgs with project dependencies, Scratch orgs snapshots streamline the traditionally manual process. Users can activate this feature in their DevHub org and utilize Salesforce CLI commands like org create snapshot and org list snapshot for snapshot management. Ultimately, Scratch org snapshots enhance efficiency by swiftly replicating Scratch orgs with specific project dependencies, minimizing repetitive manual configurations. When this update is enabled, when a bot initiates a process, it utilizes the user profile and permission sets associated with the bot to determine its data access and modification capabilities. In the past, processes initiated by a bot operated in system mode granting them access to and modification of any data. Now, processes initiated by a bot operate in user mode. When a bot initiates a process, the permissions associated with the bot and any sharing rules govern the data access and modification capabilities of the process. For instance, let's say the bot triggers the update account type process. This update enhances security in Salesforce by preventing bots from accidentally creating or changing records they shouldn't. To protect user security and network integrity, it's crucial to add trusted Salesforce org URLs to the trusted URLs for redirects allow list. Without inclusion on this list, users won't be able to navigate to other Salesforce orgs or their publicly accessible pages from your org. Any attempts to redirect users to different Salesforce orgs will be restricted unless the target URL is included in the trusted URLs for redirects allow list. This measure ensures that users can only access content from trusted Salesforce orgs, safeguarding against potential security threats. This change primarily impacts scenarios where users are directed to a different Salesforce org, such as clicking a link to an experienced cloud site hosted in another Salesforce org. Once enforced, these redirections will be permanently blocked. Commonly affected scenarios include hard-coded links to different orgs, processes guiding users to other orgs, and links redirecting to other production orgs, particularly if managing multiple production orgs. However, this change doesn't affect access to URLs within the same org but with different domains, such as links from a lightning page to a file. Users will still have uninterrupted access to URLs within the org where they are logged in. When this update is turned on, the email simple invocable action adheres to the org wide email address profile settings. Once enabled, any email simple invocable action usage will adhere to the organization's email address profile settings. Previously disregarded, the profile restrictions within the org's email address settings now apply. Features using email simple for org wide email addresses will be impacted if executed within a user context and the user's profile doesn't align with the settings. Updates to Lightning components are aplenty in this release. The following are some of these updates, along with some recommendations on how you may want to address them. Many LWC components, such as Combo Box, Data Table, 
help text, input, and progress indicator have undergone improvements in keyboard navigation, error handling, assistive text, and ARIA attributes, aiming for a more inclusive user experience. Additionally, new attributes have been introduced to provide developers with greater control over component behavior. For instance, attributes like area described by and area labeled by have been added to select and text area components to improve accessibility. Similarly, attributes like data access key and time access key for input type date time offer keyboard shortcuts, while attributes like show compact address and sub premise label for input address facilitate refined address form layouts. Furthermore, dynamic data loading has been implemented in the lightning tree component to enhance the performance of large trees. This feature allows data to be loaded dynamically as tree nodes are expanded, improving overall efficiency. In terms of module updates, several enhancements have been made. For example, Lightning slash Analytics Wave API now includes new functions to manage CRM analytics folders. Additionally, Lightning slash Platform Utility Bar API, which is currently in beta, enables the programmable control of utility bar elements. The Lightning slash Platform Workspace API has been enhanced for compatibility and no longer requires Lightning Web Security pre-activation. Moreover, the Experience slash Mobile Publisher Config API, which is also currently in beta, introduces a new wire adapter for managing mobile publisher navigation. Considering these updates, it is recommended that developers preview their custom LWC and Aura components to evaluate how they can leverage the accessibility changes and new attributes introduced in recent updates. For applications dealing with large tree structures, adopting the Lightning Tree component with dynamic data loading capabilities can significantly enhance performance and user experience. Moreover, exploring the latest module updates for LWCs provides opportunities to extend functionality and improve development efficiency by incorporating new features and enhancements into applications. Streaming API versions 23 through 36 are set for retirement in the Winter 25 release, marking them as deprecated with no further official support. This update holds significance for several reasons. Firstly, remaining on older versions means missing out on the latest enhancements and bug fixes, potentially affecting application performance and stability. Furthermore, as Salesforce evolves, legacy versions may encounter compatibility issues, leading to unexpected behavior or integration breakdowns. To ensure continued efficiency and reliability, action is necessary. For applications reliant on retiring streaming API versions, prompt upgrade to supported versions is essential. This urgency arises from three key factors. First, API versions 37 and above offer improved features, bug fixes, and overall reliability, enhancing stability and performance. Secondly, maintaining functionality integrations is vital for long-term compatibility, protecting against disruptions as Salesforce advances. And finally, Transition into durable streaming introduced in version 37 provides advanced event replay capabilities and enhanced fault tolerance, strengthening system resilience. And there you have it, our overview of the most scorching Salesforce Summer 24 release features, tailored especially for developers. Have you come across any other fresh new additions? Share your discoveries in the comments.